Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about multimeter. Like every other instrument, there are lots of manufacturers, there are lots of variation to how the buttons are organized and how uh, things are put together. But fundamentally, um, they all pretty much have the same function. This is this is a multimeter. There is, you know, depending on how expensive a multimeter you get, they got extra stuff such as maybe a temperature measurement, maybe a capacitor measurement, maybe frequency measurement, and things like that. We are not interested in that. Multimeter we are using here, and the way we use it here, we are interested in three of its functions. For this multimeter, we use a dial to select which function we are going after. If I want voltage, whether it's AC or DC, this one doesn't distinguish it. Some of them will distinguish, so you need to know whether you're measuring AC or voltage and dial into the right one. And this particular one just automatically chooses. It has advantage and it has disadvantage. If you notice, I have not connected my cables to anything, and this thing is jumping all over the place. The reason for that is I'm in the air and there's various kind of uh, uh, energies out there and this is jumping around but you got to remember that the units here are there is going to be units showing up right next to it and if you look at this one it says millivolts so these are very very small amounts that you're seeing in the air we could have anywhere up to 200 millivolts jumping around typically typically in any space within a city of even even small cities it's not uncommon to get 25 50 millivolts just hanging out there and if your probes are not connected to anything you're picking those up all right so uh so we this thing will measure voltage it can measure resistance ohm you can see the ohm signal there or it can measure amp which is over here on the yellow parts of this one now again uh, for the amp, of course, you can measure in amps, measure in milliamps for more accuracy, and microamp and more, for more accuracy. And again, that's why it's very, very important to pay attention to the little designator that show up on, shows up on the side as you change the dial. Right now, if you see it's an A, which is says an amp, if I flip it here, you're going to see a milliamp, and if I go over here, you're going to see a microamp. It's hard to read, but when you have one in front of it, you'll see it. Okay, and always make sure you put that back in uh, stop. So let's start with uh, resistance. One something that an electrical engineer or anybody who is in a course of electrical engineer has to be very good with. So let's start with that. I've got a resistor here and I tried to put it on this thing so you can kind of and bring it close to the monitor so you can uh, uh, camera so you can see it. This one, if you notice, we've got a resistor that has a red band, a black band, and a brown band. If you haven't looked at it, on engrcs.com there is a table which tells you what the bands mean. The red, the first red gives us two. Red is two. Black is zero. Brown is one. So the first two just give you digits. So this becomes 20. The third color band gives you a power of 10. So in this case it's brown, so the power of 10 is 1. So you've got 20 times 10, which is 200. The last band, if you look at it, it's a gold color band, it indicates a 5% tolerance. So your resistor is 200 ohm. This is called a nominal value. In an ideal world, it would be that amount, uh, but has a tolerance of plus and 5%, minus 5%, which basically means in real life, your resistance value, when you measure it, is going to be somewhere between 190 and 210 ohm. 5% below, 5% above. Those are called mean and max value. Now, how do we find out what the actual value is? The actual value we're going to find by putting this down and getting our voltmeter over there, put, making sure making sure that the voltmeter probes are connected correctly. The red in the little hole that has a ohm insignia right above it. And then the black one in the black hole common. This always stays here, but the red one you gotta watch. For resistance, it's gotta be where the ohm signal is. And then we turn this over to the ohm side. I take my probes here and I'm going to touch the two sides of the resistor and see what we see. Huh. 
So let's go ahead and put this a mixed connection. So it read 197. And if you look at the mean and the max, the mean was 190, the max one 197. So this resistor is well within its tolerance. So it's a good resistor at 197.6 ohm. Now you got to remember, you got this thing with these cables. These have every piece of wire, any length of wire has resistance. So the actual value of this resistor it would be somewhat less than 197. So, but just keep that in mind. Probably a couple ohms for the cable for the wires. How do how can I find out what this is? One of the easy way would be just to touch them together and see what you read. Or oh, in this case, it's, it's pretty good wire. So this one is like half an ohm. That's not bad. So that's the error you have because of the cables. All right. Uh, that pretty much covers the resistance side of this. That's one of the functions that multimeter does. Now let's take a look at some of the other features. Well, one of the other features is I can measure voltage. Okay. Um, well, one of the easiest way to talk about that is I've got my trusty power supply over here. And I'll bring it in so you can see it and I'll move this guy over. So we've got it, it tells me is telling me that I have 5 volts. I'm going to take these probes off so I can measure them. It says it's got 4.99 in there according to that. So I'm going to put this in here. And notice uh, from ohm to volt I did not change how these guys are plugged in. Because the red one for volt, ohm and all that goes in here. So when I plug this in it reads 4.97 and if you could uh, here let me bring this in just a little bit it says so the multimeter says 4.98 volt the power supply says 5 it's close enough from a tolerance point of view because we're looking at relatively uh, so less than what would that be less than uh, maybe a percent or two and that's well within the tolerance. And the other thing we have to realize, again, the cable is playing tricks on us. So some portion of the power is consumed, or voltage is consumed through the cables that brings us to this thing. So it's probably the voltmeter is set at 4, 5 volts with a 0 .3, 0 0.03 volt that we are losing here is, uh, has to do with um, the drop. So that's how you measure voltage. Now, voltage is relatively easy, and the reason it's easy is because the way voltage works, the way voltmeter portion of multimeter works is when I've got when I've got a circuit such as this one, and I put the voltmeter across it, what I'm basically doing, I'm putting the voltmeter here. And the way voltmeters are designed, this appears as a very, very large resistance. A half a decent voltmeter would look like at least 10, larger than 10 mega ohm. So when I compare, when I put a 10 mega ohm across 200 ohm, the 200 you, you won't even know this is there. So it will not. The key is that the measurement devices are not supposed to impact your circuit, and it does not. Now. Now that we've talked about that, now I'm curious. Now I want to measure, measure the current that's flowing in here. So how do I do that? Well, what I have to do literally is if, if I come and try to put a ammeter in here, I'm going to have a problem. Because ammeters have a resistance of less than a fraction of ohm. And depend, a good one would be like 0.01 or less. So what, or a short, literally a zero. So what happens if I put a zero in here? That means that this power supply has got a zero ohm across it and basically either blows, most likely will damage your multimeter. So it blows the fuse on the ammeter. Don't want to do that. That's not the right way to do that. What you want to do instead is you want to break your circuit at one point and then so you've got your power supply plus and minus. You break it here and you insert you insert your ammeter right here. Remember the ammeter resistance is zero, so it's like a piece of wire. 
you're reconnecting it. Now the current from here has to flow through here before it goes through the 200 ohm you have there. And that allows you to measure it. Now if you remember, um, well not remember, this is 5 volts, this is 200 ohm. My expectation is I should see about 25 milliamps going through that. So let's take a look at that and see if that indeed is the case. So let's go ahead and build the circuit. We got our prototype here, and I'll put it simple so we can see it. I got to find my resistor. My resistor is here. So we're going to put the resistor in. There is my resistor. And one side, and of course, I'm going to connect my power supply. The red, the red side connected to the red wire will go to the positive side of a power supply. And I'll bring it in a little closer so you can see. That there it is. There is my power supply. I'm going to be a little more close so you can see it. I shut it off. That's a safe thing to do when you're setting up your circuitry. And then the other side, the blue side, I'm going to connect to the ground or the minus side. So I've got plus 5, minus 5 coming in to these two ridge. And then one side, the plus, I'm going to take and put it on one side of the resistor. And the other side of the resistor, I'm going to go to the blue side or the negative side. Okay. Now, I want to do, I want to measure amps. So how do I do that? Well, I have to break the positive to the one-sided resistor, break this connection. And this is how I break it. Here we go. We broke it. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I've got my, now I've got to find this place to put all these things. And uh, here is my, here is my um, voltmeter. What I need to do is decide, I'm going to guess it's milliamp. If I've guessed wrongly, if it's, if it's more than milliamps, it's in amps, so I'm going to get an overflow, see nothing, so I've got to flip it over to the amp. If it's too small a microamp, then I'll see 0 or 0 0.1, so i got to flip it down to get more accuracy. So let me start with amp first. Now the other thing is very important to remember. Notice where the milliamp and the amps are, right? So I'm going to take this cable from here and put it in here. So I first assume it's going to be amp. I don't know. We, we kind of know it's milliamp, but for now it says we don't know. So we're going to put it in here. And then what I'm going to do is take one side of this probe. Again, remember alligator clips are great for, for connecting the probes. So I put an alligator clip on this. And take that and put it on one side. Okay. And then I'll take the other side. Put an alligator clip on it. And... I've got a little wire to the other side, so I can plug it in, and I put it in this side. Now, see what happens is that I've got my volt, my ammeter set to amp, and I've got my power supply sitting here. Before I turn it on, I'm going to trace it. On positive side, I come out of this wire, go to the red side. From here, I go to this wire, which goes to the positive side of... Uh, um, uh, ammeter. On the negative side I come out, go to the resistor, then through this yellow cable or wire, and then I go to the ground and go out. So what I've done, I've built this thing. I have built this circuit. So let's see what happens. I'm going to turn the power supply on. It's 5. By the way, notice, uh, I'll, I'll get back to this in a minute. So let's go over here and see what we are seeing. We are basically seeing I'll put it in amp and I'm getting 0.024. So that what it's telling me is that it is in milliamps. 0.024 is 24 thousands. So probably I would be better off if I were to move to the milliamp connections. So I'll put this in a milliamp connection and then flip this to a milliamp. So I would do much better if I was in a milliamp section. So I will turn it back on. And sure enough, see, I'm getting, I'm getting a better, a more precise reading is actually instead of 0.024, I'm reading 24.58 milliamps. So I'm getting more accuracy. 
Now, the interesting thing is if you look over here, because this power supply has the ability to give me the current and this is a relatively simple circuit, I could also flip this. And you notice this says 0.25, so it's more accurate to look at multimeter when you're measuring this than it's the power supply. But power supply is good because if it's got it, you get a quick read on that. Just to, just to recap, what we have talked about is that we have a multimeter. And this multimeter is capable of measuring amps, measuring volts, and measuring ohms. Your challenge to use it is you got to make sure you have the dial on the right thing you were trying to measure, amps, milliamps, microamps, ohms, and volts. And you got to also make sure if you're doing volt measurement, the red is on the volt and the ohm side. If you're doing amp measurement, it's on the right one. Because if you don't do that, remember, amp measurement, this, this amp meter will look like a short, zero ohm. And when you're measuring voltage and resistance, it looked like infinite resistance or pretty large, 10 mega ohm and larger. So it's very, very important for you to pay attention to what you're measuring. Now this particular one is also, this particular multimeter, not all are, but this particular one is capable of measuring capacitor, measuring frequency, and measuring temperature, uh, both, uh, all kinds of temperature. And this one even has a little laser that you can shoot to measure the temperature of things that you cannot get close to. All nice things. So it's got an IR on it. This brings us to the end of the intro of multimeter. And look forward to seeing you on the next video.